All right, guys. So uh, this fall, a little bit of background behind this video. This fall, we got some cows, two cows. Should have got four, but we got two. And being new to cow ownership, um, we needed, so during the summer, they got lots of food, dry field, pretty easy to manage other than, you know, rotating them across the field. Um, <clears throat> in the fall, I knew that I was going to need some type of shelter, both for hay and for the cows. And I've had lots of people who have owned cows tell me they just stand out in the rain and, you know, worry about it. And that's true. Um, the cow shelter's more for me, and the reason it's more for me is as the winter goes on, uh, what I don't want to end up with is a big giant mud hole. And it seems like, let me preface that, with a lot of guys who run cattle, they're running a lot ahead, and so of course they're going to destroy a wet field. I have two cows, and so what I'm trying or attempting to do is uh, making a drier area where I can feed them and they don't st stomp it up into a bunch of mud and uh, just try to make it a little easier for me to get out here and not be out in the mud. So, um, that being said, I do know that, you know, most people that own cows, they're just gonna stand out in the rain and the snow and that's, that's fine. So there's gonna be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be the hay storage, which is here on the, it would be your guys' left. Yes. And on your right, over here, is gonna be the place where the cows can loaf and where I'm gonna eventually be feeding them. And we rotate our field. We've got about three and a half acres back here. So we feed one half, then we feed the other half and we kind of get, make them go back and forth. And uh, right now in the winter time, the grass is just not growing. And, and if you've owned cows, you know that. If you haven't owned cows, the grass loses its nutrition in the winter and it doesn't grow hardly at all. And so you gotta do a lot of hay supplement. And so we were looking for a cheap way to store hay and have it out of the weather. And, you know, I, I always default to Harbor Freight first because Harbor Freight has cheap stuff, right? And so um, what these car storages they sell are uh, 10 by 17. And we got them on sale. I don't remember if it was a coupon or if they were running a deal. I, I think it was a coupon. Uh, they were normally two something. We got them for 179. So we got two of them for 179 a piece. So I think uh, 179 dollars for 170 square feet is a fantastic deal. And so if you're here for the hay storage, this is part one. If you're here for the loafing barn, uh, that's part two. So you can skip to the second video. Uh, this video here is going to be about hay storage, so we'll get into it. All right, so we'll start out by uh, uh, talking about the prep for the site. So I knew I wanted it here, my gate's right there. It still gives me full access to the gate for equipment. Um, this is kind of the high side of the property. That's kind of the Mookie side over there. So what I did when it was still fall and very dry here, I rototilled this whole area. Rototilled it, picked all the sod out, raked it, got it flat, flat and level. And then what I put down is this DG. And so this stuff here is called DG and in the Northwest. I don't know if they have it everywhere, probably not. It's decomposed granite and it, it compacts real well. It stays dry and it's kind of a fine gravel, but it's not loose. And so what I was trying to do is keep moisture from transferring up off the ground into the hay. I don't want the hay to mold. And so um, it also, when you put the DG down, it's fantastic for leveling. I was able to take a board and screed it dead level. So didn't know anything about these yet. These were in boxes. And um, talked to my uncle who has a trucking company and if I wasn't able to talk to him I was going to get these from Lowe's but my uncle hooked me up with pallets and so the idea behind the pallets is to get the hay up off the ground and keep the moisture from the ground transferring into the bales and molding them right so 
um, we'll we'll finish up here. So, so we bought 20 bales, and 20 bales fit easily in here, and we kind of did some rough calculations, being uh, novice cow owners, and we went back because they're eight dollars a bale. We went back and got 20 more bales. So I can tell you 40 bales easily fits. This is about 36 bales that's left so far. I would argue that really if you stack them high, you get 60 bales in here, no problem. Um, I had space left over over here, which I was originally gonna use for more hay storage. Uh, but for right now, I this is gonna end up being a wood corral for, we've got trees that are down in the back. I'm gonna cut them up and I'm gonna get the wood in here that keep it dry. Uh, in the middle of the winter. So this is a wood corral. I just took some of the pallets and screwed them together with uh, with some wood screws. So um, if you're considering doing this for hay storage, there's probably a couple things uh, that you'll want to do that I learned the hard way. And so um, I'll actually get you guys off the tripod and we'll kind of take a look at it. All right, guys, so I'm just going to show you kind of the layout I have here. I, this is the first time I've seen basil in here. But it's just, uh, here's my hay stacked up. So what I was going to talk to you about is the um, uh, putting this together. So there's lots and lots of videos on putting these together. You'll have no problem finding uh, videos on these Harbor Freight uh uh, carports. My, the caveat is this. So the takeaway I got from these is one, there's not a lot of videos that will tell you that the ends have to go on first. So the, the back and the front go over the tubing first before the top goes on. And so I mistakenly or just didn't know, and I threw the top on and then ended up having to kind of tuck the ends in. So that's one. Two, if you don't screw this together as you're building it, it just comes apart. It's, uh, I don't know why they thought you could just slide the tubes in, but that's, it's just, it's just a, excuse my language, it's a shit show. And so there's a way that you put these together that will <clears throat> ensure that you get, you don't lock the tubing on some weird angle. So we'll kind of go over that real quick. So when I put these together, I screw the sections together so um, maybe down here so that piece this tube and that piece and that piece all go together first flat on the ground and you can screw them all together as one piece <clears throat> you can do all the sections that way you're gonna screw this fitting together that tube this fitting together and that tube and I get these screws, I think they're called truss head screws. They're just a, either a self-tapping or a pointy screw. And I tap the, I screw those in. So I get all four sections done. One, two, three, four, just the tops. Once those are done, <clears throat> then I screw this tube on right there. I leave this tube loose, I screw that tube on to this one, I leave this tube loose, and I screw the end one on to this end piece. What that does is that makes the top ones able to rotate so that when you're setting your building up, if your ground's not perfectly level, if you were to frame it all up dead level, <clears throat> which you'd have a hard time doing because you'd have nothing to reference. Once you put your screws in, nothing rotates anymore. You're locking its position. So I'm leaving one joint open. I hope this comes across right. I'm leaving one of the joints able to articulate. Then what I do after that is I bring this out and set it up on the ground. So it's just, sorry guys. So that it's just these sections to this joint right here sitting on the ground. Once, once I have all that on the ground and pre-assembled, 
then you could either lock your tops in what i did next is i put i put all the legs on so i put that leg on this leg on that leg on and this leg on so the the building is tilted way up like this with all the legs on and the other thing i'll tell you about is um you want to make sure that these <clears throat> feet are screwed on as well not ignore that bracket just this tube will fall off while you're just screwing around with it so you want to make sure that those are bolted on and you can these are buried in the ground uh, but you want to bolt those on so you're not dealing with any of these lower tubes yet um these tubes you can also do the same thing where you screw them in on one side but you don't trap them on the other side anyways you get this all assembled my gosh it's gonna take forever guys um you get it all assembled one side up and then the other side up and now your building's up and you still have a couple of joints that can articulate and the reason for that is is your ground may not be level once you get the building where you want it where you like it you're going to put all the rest of your joints in you're going to put all your screws in and get the building so it won't slip and move around um so once the building's up you're going to put your ends on your your um vinyl ends and um so we can go over that real quick so the um these slip over the joint so you'll either plan it ahead of time or you'll pull that screw out slip this through and then um, again this tensioning strap is on the inside of this joint so you slip it through and your tarp pulls around the tube right <clears throat> now I will tell you this happened to me twice and you will go bananas if it happens to you so that strap on these end walls, before you do anything, as soon as you pull it out of the package, you're gonna tie a granny knot around this part right here. And the reason that you're gonna do that is when you slip that over, over the tube, that strap will slide towards this. It'll make a big loop. If you don't tie that end down there to the fabric, it will slip up inside this, uh, it'll slip inside of here and be way up here, you know, down there. And it will take you like an hour to get it back out. You'll have to feed like a, you'll have to feed a coat hanger in there. I had to end up taking it on the ground and making slat. It is the biggest pain in the ass. I can't believe more of the videos don't talk about it if you don't tie the black strap to the fabric it will pull up inside and you'll spend hours screwing around with that so that's a huge thing to do now as far as routing goes so you got your ends on and you need to tighten them around there so they include eight cheap ratchet straps and they are these guys they're these guys right here these hook on to the feet and pull down on those black straps and the easiest one to get to is the front here so we'll look at this so what it's meant to do is they're meant to have two let me get down here real quick they're meant to have one ratchet strap for the front wall and one ratchet strap for the side wall tensioning and i think they would have it where this strap oh that's the front wall they would have this strap, which is the side wall right here, or front wall. I don't know how they planned this. So let me explain this. Uh, how do I want to do this? 
I'll summarize it first. So, if you don't run those around the tube, and I'll show you in a second, but I'm prefacing it. If you don't run the straps around the tube, when you pull on the front wall strap, it will actually start to rip out of the fabric or the, the tarp material, the it's vinyl. The sidewalls will do something similar, but not as bad. But the pull angle, basically you can get them so tight, it'll just start to rip the material because it's cheap as, as all get out. So what you're gonna see is two separate things. One, I only used one strap. I fed both straps into one ratchet. And I felt for me, it was easier. You're gonna have to experiment around, but I was able to pull them both tight and then ratchet them down and get the whole thing to come up tight. Number two, if you don't go around the tube, it will rip them. And so I'm gonna show you the routing that I did. And I feel like this is the way you should do it to keep these things from ripping. So we're gonna look at that next. So what I did is the front wall right here this is the front this is the front wall strap goes around this fitting and the bottom tube here and we'll circle back to these tubes in a second but they both straps then the sidewall this sidewall strap goes around the tube this way around the outside and then go feeds over this tube as well and there's a order so so this is hard to explain but the sidewall strap is first closest to the tube and then the front wall strap or back is second behind that they both feed together they both feed together into one strap and then they're hooked right here on this hole which is what they intended at the factory so this is the tube I was talking about. You can see both straps. I made sure and kept everything flat and fed it all through nicely and ratcheted it up. So that's priority number one. Now, you don't want your building to lift. So you can see another strap here. And we'll get to that in just a second. So this, these two straps need to feed around this tube to not rip the material off in my opinion. So, next thing. The bottom tubes. So when you are done pulling the fabric over the top of this thing, you're gonna set both of these tubes about, I'm gonna say six inches from the feet. On this building, I didn't screw them to the tubes. On the other building I did, except the ends I screwed. I just noticed I screwed them in. So same screws, same one inch self tappers, truss head, and you're going to see, you're going to see right there that these don't, these want to slip up and down when they're tight. So I pushed them down and then screwed them in. This does not clamp this strong enough. So you're going to put these in. I ended up putting on the other one, they're everywhere. They're at every single joint. So um, you're gonna thread these tubes through. You're gonna push them down to where they're about six inches from the, the bottom there, both sides. You should end up with a pretty tight, not super tight, but pretty tight fabric. And the middle joints you can just screw them down and not fix them with self tappers but i would do that so um i just after having these fall apart a couple times you're gonna put screws in every single joint uh let's move on to the last part which i feel like is the most important part and that is that you do not want this thing blowing away in a storm so if air gets under this it will fly away i'm guessing even if you had it tied to concrete it would fly away so I would rather have all these tubes shear off in a storm and not fly away no matter what. So this part is, I think, the best part of this that a lot of people don't talk about. And that is I wanted to find a way to anchor the building down quickly and cheaply. And I ended up using um, T-posts. So my recommendation would be to buy either 8-inch long T-posts, 8-inch. Eight, eight 
eight foot long T posts and cut them in half or just buy four foot T posts. But basically what I did is I used a fence pounder and then a sledgehammer. I'll show you the sledgehammer. Harbor Freight again for the win. The big sledgehammer there. And what I did is I pounded T posts down into the ground until they were literally a couple inches out of the ground right here because I don't want to kick them. I don't want them to be a tripping hazard. I drilled a hole in them and I went and bought cheap Walmart or Harbor Freight ratchet straps and I hooked the ratchet strap to the T post which will not pull out of the ground and I just looped the ratchet strap over the joint right here and this building is flexible but very strong and that will not come out of the ground there's you'd have to have a tractor to pull that out and so I did that in all four corners. I put um, straps, I pounded T-posts down to their near level to the ground, drilled them out ahead of time so that I could put a hook through them. And I ratchet strapped all four corners of this building to the T-posts, which are three feet in the ground, four feet in the ground, three, six, maybe they're three feet in the ground. I bought six foot T-posts. Anyways, um, the ground was really hard at the time, and uh, I mean, I just don't believe for a second that they're going to pull out. So that would be my recommendation to you. Um, I think that wraps up this video. Let me think real quick. Is there anything else I'd recommend to you guys? Um, the, there's moisture that comes off the hay, and it kind of gets moist in here in the mornings, and so... First thing I do, I come out and I'll just unzip one side there and then just leave it open and it kind of gets some air in here and lets the moisture go out. I am going to down the road look for um, something I can install, either melt in or I'm not quite sure, but a gable vent would be nice. Would vent a lot of the moisture that is in here, gets trapped. So if I find a gable vent and I figure out a decent way of installing it, some lightweight gable vent, then we'll uh, we'll cover that. But uh, other than that, um, I just can't believe how great this worked out for hay storage. And uh, this is the end of part one. Uh, we're gonna go take a look at the cow uh, shelter next and what unique uh, problems that presented and kind of how I overcame them, I think. So I hope this helps somebody as always. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Talk to you later.